So when you're writing scheme code, it's important to have an understanding of how to recursively solve problems. So even though we don't necessarily need to do arithmetic recursively, I want to take some time to walk through how we can do arithmetic recursively. So as an example, suppose we have 5 plus 3. So that means on the left side of the plus sign, we have five things, and on the right side, we have three things. We can solve this recursively by adding one to the first add end and subtracting it from the second. And we continue this process until we're adding zero, at which case we have an identity, and so we have our answer. So the way that works is 5 plus 3 would be equivalent to 6 plus 2. And you'll notice now we've moved one of the blocks from the 2 side over to 6. We do that again. We have 7 plus 1. And then when we move the last block, we have 8 plus 0. Now you'll notice there's no more blocks to move, and adding 0 is an identity, and so our answer is 8. So that's how we would do addition recursively, and we can actually do multiplication in a similar fashion. So let's see how both of those would work in Scheme. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to find an increment and a decrement procedure. This is just so I don't have to do add 1 and subtract 1. And the whole reason I'm doing that is, again, I don't want to have to use the addition operator inside my function. I want to show that we're actually breaking this addition down into discrete component. So we're going to have an increment function that's just going to add one and a decrement that's just going to subtract one. So I have those functions written and I will test them. And it looks like those work correctly. And I'll add what we're doing up here at the top. So now let's define addition in terms of incrementing and decrementing. Now we actually need one more primitive, and that's going to be to check to see if something's zero. And Scheme has a built-in predicate that'll do that for us, so we'll use that. So increment, decrement, and a predicate to check if something's zero. That's all we need to define addition recursively. So we're going to have two parameters, x and y, and if x is zero, actually no, it should be if y is zero. So if y is zero, we're going to return x. That means there's nothing on the right hand side of our pile. Everything is on the left side. And then otherwise, we're going to recursively add incrementing x and decrementing y. Now you may notice this won't work with negative numbers. For now, we're not going to consider those. So let's write some test code. We'll add 9 and 5 together. We'll add 7 and 22 together. And notice in one case, x is bigger, in the other case, y is bigger. That just gives us some additional checks to make sure we're doing everything correctly. So let's run these to test. And we have a bug decrementing. That should just be decrement. So let's run that. And we get 2 in every case. So that does not seem to be correct. So let's check why we're always getting two here. So if y is zero, we return this. Otherwise, we increment y and we, ah, ha, we increment x and decrement y. And now we get 14, 29, and 6. That's as we would expect. So again, always make sure you check your, test your code, even if it looks right, because sometimes you can have bugs that don't show themselves. And again, make sure you're thoroughly testing. Test different cases. Don't test something that basically is going to work the same. So for example here, we had a 0 for x. It should also work if we have a 0 for y. And we also had cases where each one was the bigger number. So now let's define multiplication recursively. And it's actually going to be very similar. So if y is 0, we're going to return x. And our recursive case, we're going to recursively add x to the result of recursively multiplying x and decrement y. right? Because we can think of multiplication as adding x to itself y times. So that's exactly what we're doing here. So if we run these. No, this doesn't look good. So it looks like we have a bug. So let's think what that could be. So we're going to add x to x decrement y. 
And so what you'll see is that we actually have one too many things here. And of course, that should be recursive mult. So that's why those were wrong. Okay, so good. This is what I'm expecting to see. So 9 times 5 is 45. This is not 54. And 7 times 22 is 154, not 161. So where we're running into a problem is, in our zero case, we're adding x. And actually, if y is 0, we should just return 0. So now let's run this, and you'll notice we get the answers that we would expect. Okay, so that's a quick introduction to how to do recursive multiplication in Scheme. And we'll actually see an example in Prolog where not only is the addition and multiplication defined recursively, but we'll actually define the numbers themselves recursively. And in that case, we can actually reduce the number of primitives we even need. Okay, so again, this isn't very practical in the sense that this is much slower than actually doing the addition or multiplication using the built-in operations. But again, what you want to start doing is thinking about how to solve problems recursively. So even if maybe it's not a good idea to solve it recursively, it's a good idea from the standpoint of giving yourself practice about things that really probably you don't even think about how you actually add and multiply anymore or what addition and multiplication actually are. And so again, by thinking about these things in terms of recursion, it gives you practice in recursive problem solving. And it also allows you to think more deeply about what those concepts mean so that you're able to apply similar concepts later on.